up. This was just stressful. <laughs> this was not how I expected this to go at all, which is like normal. I don't even know if we got it on film. That's how stressful this was. Ryan's soaked. I'm soaked. Our gear is spread out everywhere. We were actually leaving from the first place that we had permission to hunt on and what, half a mile, three quarters of a mile down the road? I actually had no idea. Two miles down the road, I was like, goats. There was like a hundred off the side of the road and Ryan's like, there's a house right there. Let's just go talk to him. right there let's just go talk to him so we drove up there and I was like um you're gonna go to the front door so if you get shot at least there's a survivor to tell your story <laughs> dude ended up being very very nice the landowner super friendly and told us like he didn't even know that he had antelope on his property right now so he was like get after it this is the boundary lines and we got out of the vehicle walked up a uh, fence row or whatever and tried to get shots from there because they were, oh, I don't know, three, four hundred. All right, so here's the deal. We've got about a hundred antelope bed down. Some of them are up, some of them are bed down. Um, not too far from us, about 350 yards. Problem is there's no high ground. And when we try to get up in a shooting position, we can't see them, so we're gonna have to go around A little, there's a little rise that goes right to them. I have to go around and try to get up there on it. So, I'm just look. But we could not get shots. We were too low, um, and they were below a ridge line. So we decided to cross over and stalk down this field, and we stick out like a sore thumb with all the snow on the ground, and I didn't figure we would get this close. And then we get into position. We can't bow shoot at the same time, position-wise, because there were so many goats out there, so many antelope, that we couldn't get ranges on them, and they were just constantly moving. So that was stressful, trying to pick out one antelope out of a herd of 100 antelope and keep constant ranges on it. And then I couldn't get stable. I didn't feel stable at all. So Ryan made me shoot first. And I hit and shot it again just to make sure that it wouldn't suffer. And then it took another like 10 minutes to get Ryan on one and they were way far away and I couldn't get a range because I was still shaking. And he shot one and then it, it went over the ridge line so we are going to give it a few minutes. We're going to take our stuff back to the truck, drive down, try to find a better vantage point and see if we can't find Ryan's since uh, I told him dope on one and then told him dope on another as he was shooting and the dope wasn't the same. <laughs> so we'll see how good of a shot that was. I mean, Ryan's a good shot. It's not because of that. It's because he didn't give me a second to give me the right dope. right there on the going right to left it just stopped I will have to give it to Justin Townsend from Harvesting Nature. He said, I'm betting you guys tag out on the first day. So we're both tagged out, so now the problem is we're a long ways from the truck. We got a long drag. I think if we go around that way, in that bottom, that up and over, I think we'll be okay. So that's the way we hunt. <laughs> Screw you, Wyoming. Yeah. I reached down to fishes picking her up and grabbed a handful of cactus. 
That's super fun. Anyway. Good shot. What'd you shoot with? 6.5 Grindle. How far? Oh, 420, 20 yards. about two hours west of where we're staying in our Airbnb. And we were gonna buy our tags this morning, like literally right outside our front door. And the business was closed today. Um, they had a, a loss in the family. So we had to find someplace else to go to buy our tags because Wyoming requires you to have printed license. And if you buy them online, they mail them to you, which would have done us no good. We found another place near us that was a marina, but it was also closed. So we drove, oh, about 20 minutes south to Upton and got our license here at this grocery station. And we got to pet a dog and we got our license printed out. So That's we are good to go. We're going to whitetail hunt in this uh, winter wheat field. So, this is going to be interesting. We just busted out some antelope and one whitetail doe already, and it's like 4 o'clock, so but it's still really early. So, we're probably going to be in this position for a while. I might sleep. We had an antelope at like 15 or 20 yards chilling right in front of us. Where was that antelope at on day one? Why do we have to go 1,700 yards to get mine? Got to hit that one with a rock. Anyway, we're going to sit here and try to fill a couple whitetail tags. So clearly I missed my deer and had no idea why or how I missed my deer because I had just shot an antelope the day before at 420 yards with no problem. Well, Ryan jumps up and sees that my turret, my elevation turret cap is a whole revolution around which ended up making it way too high for the shot that I had at the deer. And it took us a while to figure out what had happened because I was almost certain that I had elevation dialed correctly on my gun. And we figured out that I made a really bad rookie mistake. What we realized is the day before we had gone out and went to some public land to do some filming on uh, building different shooting positions. 
And when I had grabbed my gun, I unloaded it, and I realized I had not put my elevation turret back to zero. Looking down on the gun, I put the elevation turret back to zero, or what I thought was zero. And then when we went out and set up for the whitetail hunt, I did not put my elevation turret back to zero and triple check that I was at my zero stop. I'm not super fam familiar with that scope. That's not my scope, that's Ryan's scope. It's also, also his gun because we took his Grindel and not my Grindel. And so when I put the zero back on the elevation turret, I didn't even think, I didn't think there was a zero stop, so I thought it was a zero. And in fact, I definitely was not. So, lessons learned from my mistake, make sure that you put your zero back on your elevation tur turret to your zero stop. Fortunately, it wasn't at the antelope, it was at a white tail, so. By the way, we're at Devil's Tower, which is 45 minutes north of Moorcroft where we stayed.